بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم دعوة أهل السنة دعوة كتاب الله دعوة من كتاب الله إلى كتاب الله ومن سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم The path and the da'wah of Ahl Sunnah is the path of calling to Allah from the book of Allah and it is calling from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam that's the da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah and again as we said as Imam Barbahari said Rahimahullah Ta'ala one of our Salaf on the madhab of Imam Ahmed Ahmed Ibn Hanbal Rahimahullah Ta'ala he said Al-Islam was sunnah was sunnah to heal Islam that Islam is a sunnah and the sunnah is Islam letting us know they can't be divided letting us know that it is one and the same letting us know that that's our path that's what we call to that's and we warn against going against that that's what we warn against we warn against people calling to takfir for example calling to disparage the leaders rebel against the leaders speak out against the leaders all of these these different manahij in ways that go against the usul of ahl sunnah because that goes against the usul the foundation of ahl sunnah and we encourage people and ourselves first and foremost to to messek adhere strongly to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this is where some of our problems lie many of our problems lie why? because of our shortcomings our own sins that we want a lot of times we want good I believe all the believers they want good but how many people really get that good? that only comes from practice and that makes me reflect upon an ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسِ بِالْبِرْ وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسِكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ أَفَلَا تَعْكِلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتاب الكريم Do you command the people with bir, with taqwa, or with, with piousness and righteousness? And you forget yourselves. Wa tansona and fusikum. Wa antum tatlun al kitab. And you read the book. That's that's scary because that, that's like addressing people who have knowledge. Meaning that you have Allah's given you something of knowledge. You're calling the people to righteousness. But you forgot yourselves. You forgot to practice yourself. You forgot to call your own family. And may Allah forgive us of our many, many shortcomings with regards to our families and with regards to ourselves. And that it's easy to preach, but it's difficult to practice. Allah addresses the one who's making that da'wah he addresses them by, at the end by saying don't you think you know aren't you a person of intellect <laughs> meaning that you are calling to good you're calling to righteousness but you're doing wickedness and may Allah forgive us and may Allah help us to be better I mean so that's a stern warning to beware of hypocrisy, 
to beware of the traits of hypocrisy, to beware of all those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with, and strive to practice what we preach. That doesn't mean we should stop preaching and just indulge in wickedness, no. Absolutely not. In fact, the believer, all of us have to practice what we know. We're all going to be held accountable and responsible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Balaga anni wulo ayah, that you should share, share something from the message, even if it's just one verse, even if it's something simple. That does not mean you make a minhaj though, a methodology where you go about and your whole Tao is based on jah jahil, on ignorance. And I've seen this countless times, unfortunately, with our brothers in Jamaat Tabligh, that they'll have people, new Muslims, all kind of people, they'll read the same script, some of them don't even know the script properly, and they're speaking, their English might not even be proper, and they're trying to call people to something. And, you know, it's great, you, you want to make an effort, we all want to make an effort, that's great, that they, they do spend effort and time. And Allah knows their ikhlas, their sincerity in the heart. The problem is, is the ignorance. That you can spread more wickedness than you can do good. By making mistakes, by not knowing, by not having studied something. Instead of just speaking from your desires. Speaking without knowledge, speaking without nasus. Speaking without the Quran, speaking without the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I've seen some people who destroyed what they said. Well, Allah must stand because of ignorance. Possibly the, the person was a new Muslim and he went khuruj with him. And then they have him stand up and speak about the deen. But that's, that's not proper. It's not proper. As Sheikh Muhammad mentioned in his treatise, Verily it's an obligation for us to learn. He said no. And he said, Rahimakallah, may Allah have mercy upon you. That it's an obligation to know four things. And then he said, al ula al ilm. He said, the first thing is knowledge. The first thing is knowledge. And then he mentioned what knowledge is. Al ilm. Wa ma'rafat Allah. And it's knowing Allah. Knowing the tawheed of Allah. Wa ma'rafat al Nabi. And knowing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Knowing about him. Alayhi salatu wa sallam. His sunnah. How to practice. Wa ma'rafat al deen al Islam bi adillah. And knowing the religion of Islam based upon the textual proofs. That's what Islam is. Then he said, Wathani al Amalabi. Athani al Amalabi. The second thing is practicing that knowledge. So again, after gaining something of knowledge, we have to practice it. We have to practice that knowledge. Then he said, a thalith, a da'wah to ilay. The third thing is calling. And that's beautiful. That shows us, some, gives us an, an organization for what we're trying to do. That it isn't just about uh, gaining one ayat and then running around the world and, and spending a lot of time with that one ayat and not even knowing the meaning, not even knowing. The, the point being is not to be on ignorance and calling to Allah. You cannot call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with ignorance. Another example that I've witnessed myself, and may Allah forgive us all of our sins, but I know particular brothers, I know a particular brother, he wanted to do good. I believe he had sincerity. Many, actually I've known many like this. They wanted sincerity and they tried to establish things, but they were on misguidance. And they were too proud to let someone correct them. Instead they took from their sheikh, and they took from so-and-so, and they read, and they did this, but they, they were on sabil ghayr mu'minin. They were on the wrong path. They were on the path of takfir. The path of calling every place Dar al-Harb, and stealing, and, and trying to say that's in the name of Islam. The path of, of decry, decry, uh, declaring other Muslims to be uh, disbelievers. The path of destruction. And in the end, they all got that same destruction. Well, lie, I, I, I bear witness. I can think of two particular individuals who are high-profile cases now. Because they went astray. 
And we tried. We tried with both of them. Why? They had the zeal, but they stayed on ignorance. So again, al-ilm. Then the second thing, al be practicing that knowledge. Then a thalith, a dawah to ilay. Then you call. And I tried to advise one of the individuals. I said, hold on. I said, I didn't start really even doing a little bit of dawah that I do until after 10 years of having gone overseas, studied with different mashayikh, learning the Arabic language, doing different things. Then I started to begin a little bit of dawah efforts. Don't be so eager. I know you're eager, but use your eagerness to seek knowledge first. Then you will do more good than you do harm. But in fact, if you're on ignorance, you'll do more harm than you do good. This is what the ulama, the salaf used to say. That the person who has, uh, who's jahil, or that has a little bit of knowledge, he's like the doctor, I think this is a statement of Ibn al-Qayyum, in fact, he's like the doctor, like half a tabib, like he's half a doctor. How would you feel if you were going to get an operation and the person was half a doctor? Meaning that they studied half the, year, the time that no, most doctors do for medical school. Or he said, hey, I've read all the same thing that the person in medical has done, but I just did it at home. I just read the books. I'm ready to do a, a, a surgery on you. I'm ready to help you, uh, you know, do, do, do whatever. How would you feel? A half doctor. And likewise, it's the same with Allah's deen. You don't want to be half a da'i. A person who has very little knowledge and you're trying to spread it everywhere. And in fact, doing more damage than good. Getting more sin than good. So, as Sheikh Muhammad said, the third thing, uh, the second thing, al amalubi is practicing. The third thing is a dawah to ilay, then calling to dawah, and the fourth thing is being patient, a sabr ala adafi, that you have to be patient with the harm of giving dawah. That dawah is a harmful thing, meaning that it harms come to you just like that's the minhaj of the NBA. That's what the prophets, alayhim salatu wasalam, they went through when they gave dawah. They were harmed. Some were killed. They were uh, oppressed, attacked by uh, the leaders. They were, they were, many, many uh, harms befell them. And that's, that's the nature of it. That there's going to be enemies from the men in the jinn that are going to try to harm you. Or perhaps it will be frustrating that it seems that no one's listening. No one cares. But if you have something good to offer, you keep trying. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll be rewarded by your Lord. And you don't know how your Lord will, will raise up that dawah that you did and let it be a forgiveness for you and something that will benefit you in the hereafter. And look how many imams, some of them didn't even have students. I heard that Imam Tabari, rahimahullah ta'ala, I believe it was Imam Tabari, the great mufassir, amongst this explainer of the Quran and, 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 and so forth, and the alam, that he didn't have any students. Look at where his sincerity left him. That we still mention him. We still go to his tafsir. We still benefit from his books. We still benefit from how many imams. Every household has Bukhari and Muslim. Every household has Arba'in and Nawi. Imam Nawawi's book. And Riyadh al-Salihin, Imam Nawawi. Died and he was only about 40 years old. Never married. That's because of the sincerity. And Allah gave barakah in their da'wah. So may Allah bless us with Amnafaras, Kintaibu, Amal, and Mutakabilin, forgive us of our sins. We sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad.